Welcome to this summary and analysis of book 3 in the Brothers Karamazov. This book is called The Sensualists, and we have Dimitri to thank for that. Thank you, Dimitri. Book 3 first explores Grigory and his wife Marfa, servants of the Karamazovs. Grigory's own child, born with six fingers, lived only two weeks and was never baptized. Grief-stricken, they found the dying infant girl stinking Lisaveta, and her newborn son in the streets. Rumors swirled that the drunkard Fyodor Karmatsov may have been the father, so Grigory and Marfa adopted the baby, naming him Smerdjakov. Dimitri then begins to tell of his complex love story. Dimitri's old army acquaintance, Katrina's father, was in debt for 4,500 rubles, and Dimitri had proposed a loan to save him, but, of course, in an effort to seduce his daughter Katerina. Theodore gave over the money to Dimitri, but only after Dimitri had promised not to ask for any more money. Dimitri then handed the money over to Katerina, without any thought of seduction. But then, her father passed away, and she was able to pay Dimitri back with an inheritance and offered marriage. Dimitri first said yes. However, in his confession of his longing for another woman, Grushenka, Dimitri spoke of how her charm overwhelmed him as he returned to his father's town, instead of beating her, as he had planned. Strange guy. But this love brought self-loathing too, of course. And during dark times he would read Schiele's Ode to Joy, Andi Freude. He now struggles with hating himself for this, and for being engaged to Katrina while still loving Grushenka. Over Brandy, he opens his heart for his beloved brother Alyosha. The three chapters called Confessions of an Ardent Heart is central here, and they include a scene in which Dimitri recites the Ode to Joy, and this is one of the most positive and uplifting scenes in the novel, or indeed any novel. It shows that despite all the troubles and inner conflicts he's going through, he still has the capacity to hope and to strive for something better. It also shows that Dimitri is not a character just defined by his flaws, but also about his aspirations. This scene not only gives the reader a glimpse of Dimitri's inner world, but also an insight on how art and literature can be a powerful source of comfort and inspiration for people. Beethoven also understood this as well, of course, since he adapted the Ode to Joy, and the final movement of his Ninth Symphony. Smerdyakov had epilepsy, and he turned out to be a man with no love for gratitude. When young, he enjoyed hanging cats and burying them during ceremonies, which tells us a lot. Fyodor Karamazov felt a peculiar attachment to him for some reason, Smerdyakov could often be heard discussing matters of religion and philosophy with Ivan, sometimes speaking about them with outlandish words. Fyodor often calls Smerdyakov Balam's ass, hinting to the biblical story of the talking donkey. And this donkey sees the angel before his master does, the seer. But the master beats him for trying to avoid the angel. And this raises a question. Can the seer, which could be us, raise himself to the level of the donkey, so he also sees what the donkey sees? And maybe the donkey, or in this case Smerdyakov, is the one who sees the truth, and we might as well, but only if we leave our egos behind. At one dinner, when Ivan proclaimed his disbelief in God and immortality. While Alexei had sworn to believe in them, Fyodor suddenly saw utter hatred in Ivan's eyes. 
When Dimitri arrived at the house, Fyodor screamed that Dimitri was going to murder him. Dimitri was convinced Grushenka was in the house and he is mad as hell. As they fought over Grushenka, Dimitri began striking his father and then kicked him in the head before fleeing with a promise to kill Fyodor. But still, Fyodor said it was Ivan he feared more than Dmitri. Alyosha and Ivan attended to his wounds and put him to bed. Later, Alexei left his father's house, walking towards Katerina's place. She told him of her love for Dmitri and a plan to save him, and her awareness of Grushenka's presence and Dmitri's former lover. When Katerina met Grushenka, she showed her kindness and devotion, yet it was met with mockery and scorn from Grushenka. These two women fight over Dmitri and they don't get along at all. Katerina was of course hurt and Alyosha decided to leave. As Alyosha was leaving, Mrs. Koklakova, who was also there, gave him an envelope with a letter from her daughter Lisa. And the letter said that Lisa loved him and wanted him to visit. Yes, a love letter from Lisa to Alyosha. Alyosha returned to the monastery that night and found that Sosima was ill and decided to stay with him. But on his way there he met Dmitri who told him a shameful secret and scandal, beating his chest as he spoke of it, though Alexei was still perplexed. We have some strong themes in book 3 as well. One. The text shows that despite Dimitri's troubles and inner conflicts, he still has the capacity to hope and strive for something better. This suggests that it is important to focus on one's positive qualities and aspirations, rather than dwelling on negative aspects of oneself. It also emphasizes the importance of self-improvement and personal growth in order to overcome inner turmoil. 2. The scene in which Dimitri recites Ode to Joy highlights the power of art and literature as sources of comfort and inspiration for us. This suggests that engaging with creative works can have a positive impact on one's mental and emotional well-being. It also implies that literature can provide a deeper understanding of human nature and emotions. 3. Characters in the book raise questions about the nature of truth and perception, suggesting that one might gain a deeper understanding by leaving the ego behind, and to listen more than you speak. This suggests that in order to truly understand reality, we must be willing to let go of our preconceptions and biases. 4. The text shows how Dmitri's love for Grushenka and his jealousy towards Fyodor leads to self-loathing and destructive behavior. It also shows how Katerina's love for Dmitri and her willingness to help him leads to her being mocked and hurt. This suggests that strong emotions like love and jealousy can have a profound impact on our actions and relationships and that it's important to be aware of how they affect us. 5. The text shows how Dmitri is capable of destructive behavior, and how Ivan's disbelief in God and immortality causes him to hate his father. This suggests that it is important to be aware of one's own capacity for darkness, and strive to overcome it. This could be achieved by being self-aware and practicing self-control and trying to understand the root causes of our destructive tendencies. And finally six, the text shows how Grushenka's mocking and scorn towards Katerina, despite her kindness and devotion, 
reveal her true character. It also shows how Smeljakov's lack of love for gratitude reveals his character. This suggests that the way a person treats others, especially those who are kind and devoted to them, can reveal their true character. So it's important to pay attention to the way people treat others in order to understand them better.